Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Give him glorious praise. Good morning and welcome to this worship service at St. Andrews. It's a joy for me to be here this morning to lead worship and I'm not wearing my choir robe as usual. I have my preaching robe on. I'm delighted to be sharing worship with you. I want to wish a very happy Mother's Day to those of you who are mothers. And um, there are announcements in your, well, you don't have a packet, do you? But um, typical announcements, actually, I think. Uh, is there anything new that someone is aware of that we should make note of? Okay. Then I invite you to stand and join together as we join in the call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God has called us together to strengthen us. Even now, God's hand of blessing rests upon us. Thanks be to God for the love we have received. We come to live, proclaim, and celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. May God be glorified in all we do and say. Confident in God's grace, let us confess our sin before God. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done to displease you. Forgive us and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways. 
for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. People of God, know that you are forgiven and be at peace. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Hold on to the peace of Christ and then pass it to others who are near you and others that you can see. Let us pass the peace of Christ. As we continue to prepare our hearts for worship, join me in our prayer of illumination. Holy God, as we open your word, help us lay aside all that keeps us from listening to your voice. Grant us grace to hear, wisdom to understand, and courage to apply what we learn. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture this morning comes from John chapter 15, verses 8 to 17. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my Father. You do not choose me, but I choose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, be Thanks be to God. God. Happy Mother's Day. I'm going to tell you what my father tells me, not all the time, but call your mothers if you haven't. Or find a way to celebrate your mothers. Because a mother is someone who shows us the first love of Christ. But while mothers are also the, the great upstanding example, and I have, I have a picture of Melinda that I keep in my office. It's a great, great photo I love because it's an example and an embodiment of the love that she has as a mother for Ray and Adeline. But as mothers all show that love to their children, there are also other mothers, if you will. Celebrate those women today in your life as well. In my family, my father was influenced by his mother, by my mother. But there was also an amazing woman in our church named Grace Jones. She was about 104 years old. And the love that she showed my father, the love that she showed my family, was a reflection of the love of Christ. 
So today, don't just celebrate your mothers, but celebrate the women who are mothers to all of us in some way. And thank God that we have a mother's love in any form to show and reveal Christ. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the reflection of your love that is supplied by mothers of all kinds. I ask that in this day and in this week we would see the women of influence in our lives and that we would celebrate them, giving thanks for how you have loved them so that they will love us. I praise you and thank you for all things. In Christ's name, amen. Our second scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8 and verse 13. If I could speak all the languages of humans and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I could prophesy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, everything I own, and if I let myself be burned alive, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. I consider myself to be very blessed. I grew up in a wonderful Christian home, a home where prayer and reading the Bible and going to church were central. Now, life wasn't perfect in my family, I'm not saying that. But my parents had their priorities in order, and they lived out their faith. On this Mother's Day, I am exceedingly grateful to my mother for being a spiritual mentor and a very loving and compassionate person. Love is at the center of what it means to be family. Love is the bottom line, the core of a healthy family and a healthy church family, and indeed, 
love is how we are to relate to people everywhere. Wait a minute. People can be aggravating and annoying. And we're supposed to love them? All of them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, we are. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And how did Jesus love? He gave up everything, his very life for his disciples and for all people who believe, for you and for me. Just as I have loved you, he said, you also are to love one another. Okay, we've got some work to do. <laughs> love is not easy. The Apostle Paul tried to help his friends in Corinth understand this love that we are to have for one another. He emphasized the importance of love and the importance of putting that love into practice in everything we do. So how could we possibly describe this love we need to have for each other? Well, actually, Paul already described it for us in this passage from 1 Corinthians. And here's what he said. Love is patient. Think about that for a moment. Patience, calm, composed, able to accept or at least tolerate delays, problems, even suffering without becoming anxious or annoyed. Yes, love is patient. What about you? Are you patient? And Paul said then, love is kind. What comes to your mind when you think about kindness? These came to my mind, caring, sympathetic, friendly, compassionate. Our relationships with family and friends and others are so much more enjoyable when kindness prevails. Love is patient and kind, and when we extend our love to others, it's very likely that we'll receive love back from them. Now, after Paul shares these two things that are so important to do in order to love others, he puts out there several things that you don't do when you love others. Love is not jealous. It isn't boastful. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love doesn't insist on its own way. Love is not irritable. It's not resentful. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. Whoa, that's quite a list. A list of things that we are not to do if we truly love. And after that long list of things that love is not, Paul adds five more positive things. Love rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. And what about this one? Love endures all things. Love never ends. It's obvious that the love Paul is speaking of here is not just some warm, cuddly feeling that we express on Valentine's Day. True love can hurt. In fact, love does hurt. Not all the time, certainly, but certainly sometimes. Thomas Merton noted, as long as we are on earth, the love that unites us will bring us suffering by our very contact with one another. Even saints cannot live with other saints on this earth without some anguish, without some pain at the differences that come between them. Love is way more than an emotion. Love is the very essence and purpose of our lives. Paul concludes this section of his letter to the Corinthians by reminding them of three main things that are essential to being a follower of Christ. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these 
is love. So if love is the greatest, then it is indeed the one we need to excel in. The New Testament, originally written in Greek, had three different words for love. Eros, from which our English word erotic comes, is romantic love, the love that newlyweds have for each other. The Greek word philia is what we might call brotherly love, an affectionate regard for and loyalty to friends and family. And then there is agape, unconditional, self-sacrificing love. God's unconditional and self-sacrificing love for us and our love for God and for others. So Paul is saying here that we need to use this agape love as the driving characteristic of what motivates our actions. Whether here at church or out in the world, we need to make sure that our actions are expressing genuine care for the people that surround us on, our, on a daily basis. In our neighborhood, at work, at school, with others we don't even know who are walking along the rail trail or shopping in a store. Love is patient. If at any time you're feeling agitated, take a deep breath. Ask for God's help. Because love is patient. And love is kind. I encourage you to think about ways that you can reach out and be kind to others to show your kindness, even to people who may not be kind to you, even our enemies. Whoa. Throughout this past week, as I've been working on this sermon, old songs in the 1960s kept coming back to me. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, Sweet love, no, not just for some, but for everyone. Oh my gosh, yes. Our world definitely needs more love, not just for some, but for everyone. Love needs to be the number one thing on our to-do list every day. And number one on our prayer list, a prayer for ourselves that we will live in love. As I hear the news each day, I'm overwhelmed by the hatred that exists in this world. Hatred of those who are different from us. The devastating hatred expressed against people of color. The senseless shooting and killing of black Americans. The violence against Asian Americans. And lately, particularly as I've been working on this sermon, I've been asking myself, what can I do to make a difference? How can I express my love for these people? We have it easy. We didn't choose to be of European descent, to have light-colored skin. And people of African or Asian descent didn't choose the color of their skin or their accent or their language. And yet, they are treated so harshly, so unfairly. How can I make a difference? How can you make a difference? How can we show our love for others who are different from us? I encourage each of us to prayerfully reflect upon and ask God, how can I grow in my love? There are certainly many ways that that can happen. And after we pray and ask God to lead us, then we'll need to seek God's help every day in order to live out that love. Jesus said to them, just as I have loved you, you are to love one another. May it be so. Amen.
let us together in a voice of love affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The offertory plates are located in the back as you exit the sanctuary, and for those online, all information for giving can be found on the giving tab. Let us join together again, reflecting the love that Christ has given us in our prayer of dedication. To you, O merciful God, we return what you have entrusted to us in your abundant grace. Receive these offerings to further your kingdom here on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
as we gather for prayer. We got word that Ed Tenney died yesterday afternoon. So let us keep Bonnie and the family in our prayers. The family and friends of Bill Young, who passed away on April 25th. And for Annette Chevalier and her family in the death of her father, Robert, for peace and comfort for the family. Prayers for Craig Samuelson for healing of his lungs from post-COVID pneumonia and for continued strength and return to normal living. For Hillary, a friend of Joy's who finally got a kidney transplant, but her healing is not going well. Let us keep her in prayer. We continue to pray for Maya Richardson, the humor. And certainly prayers for Pastor Robin and the family for a safe delivery of her new baby and uh, a blessed time with the baby as after it is born. Let us bring to God our prayers in this time. Most gracious and holy God, we come to you, the giver of love and all good things. And we seek in these moments to rest in your love and to be strengthened in our love. O oh God, you are such an amazing creator. And as we move into this season of spring, we look around us and see the beauty of green trees and flowering plants everywhere in colors of so many kinds. Oh God, we praise you and we thank you for all the ways that you bless our lives and all the ways that you lead and guide us. Oh Lord, we ask that you would continue to motivate us and move us toward loving others in the very best ways we can. We pray for Bonnie Tenney and her family. Give them a sense of peace, O oh God, and strength in these days as they mourn Ed's passing. We ask that you would be with Craig Samuelson for healing of his lungs and for continued strength. O oh God, in this moment and every moment, be with Pastor Robin for a safe delivery, for blessed time with her new baby, and be with each of the family as they love and support her in this time. O oh Lord, hear our prayers for all who need your healing touch. We pray for all the people in India, O oh God, who have been devastated by COVID in incredibly harmful ways. O oh God, we pray for all those who need to be loved. People right here in Lebanon who don't know the love of family. Help us to be love for your people, O oh God. And help us to live with you guiding us always, that we might be your people in this world. We pray in the words that our Lord taught us. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our last song. let us go forth in God's love that we might be people of love and now the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore amen mm-hmm.